Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Wednesday. Oh my God, it's hump day. Both the Strice brothers are in the building. First time together, the four of us, iconic foursome at the studio. Hey, Jax, how you doing? I'm doing very well because it is hump day. The Strice brothers are here to celebrate and name a more iconic foursome. You couldn't. You can. No, like you could try. You can. You could try. I dare you. I dare you. Right. Like we said, no more iconic foursome than Bryce, Thrice, and their parents. We are here with both the boys. It's Wednesday. This is our third episode in your new studio. Today, your tech director, IV girl, no, not IV, (laughs) AV AV girl, is praying for no technical difficulties today. I think today's the day. Third time's the charm, as they say. There's some lessons us AV girlies need to learn the hard way. Like you have to initialize your memory cards. Who the fuck knew that? You know, we have someone who helps us at our studio in New York. So all of this is new to me. Um, So I'm hoping I have no hard lessons to learn today. That's my goal. My, My goal is also never leave the backup memory card slot empty. Why not? Like, why the fuck would you do that, dumb bitch? I think third time's gonna be the charm. Yesterday's audio was so premium and then it was the video that crapped out. And so today we're gonna be firing in all cylinders. Unfortunately, the Strice brothers are no help whatsoever because they don't have thumbs and they don't get their fucking asses up at work. Look at them sleeping on the job. You know, that's what you get with the morning toast. Like these people who have weekly podcasts, like you never really know the ins and outs, the AV, the tech, the IV. And with the morning toast, since we're so transparent, consistent, and authentic, like you're seeing all sides of the podcast making. And I feel like after the toasters listen to every episode this week, by Friday afternoon, you should be able to make your own in-home studio and produce a premium podcast. That's what you learn here. That is what you learn. And we're going to give you all that industrial, entrepreneurial spirit. That and we, industrial spirit. And industrial that we love to foster. Right. We foster at the Morning Toast, Toast News Network, an entrepreneurial spirit. And I used to think that being an entrepreneur meant you didn't have a job. Um, but I've actually changed my mind on that. It is one of those terms that could go either way. You could yeah. be an entrepreneur and you could be a big yeah. success, a big wig, or you could be unemployed and an aspiring big wig. Yeah. Like I think when a lot of people go on dating apps and someone's job is listed as entrepreneur, like it's a potential red flag. Yeah. There are a lot of of terms and titles that could be big wig or no wig. Crypto is one of them. Crypto. Oh, I, I, since I don't know anything about crypto, I know it gets a really bad rap, but I'm interested by it. Like if I went on a date with someone who worked in crypto, like I would ask a lot of questions. No, but if like you were scrolling on someone's profile and it was like job, crypto miner, I would be like, you either live in a mansion or on the street. No, you I know? would assume they're a billionaire. Yeah, well, but- not anymore. But this, right, Bitcoin's crashing. But another department that's like that is real estate. Like yes. if you are in real estate, you're either a mogul or, not. or an aspiring mogul. Also, speaking of moguls and billions, um, I had a major announcement I wanted to share because yes. I was talking a lot on the podcast yesterday and on my Instagram that I had bought um, $60 worth of lottery Mega Millions tickets. And I haven't really told everyone whether I won yet. So um, special announcement, breaking news, I um, lost. And you should know that because I'm here. And if I had won $830 million last night, like no offense, I would not be here. But you won some money, right? Or was that a joke? Oh, that was a joke. Oh, I didn't I know. I okay. literally hate you. Okay, so at 11, me, Olivia, Zach, and Ben were up watching and we all went in on the lottery together. You and your husband, Olivia and her husband, and me and my husband. is running a Ponzi scheme. I was, yeah. run- I was running, you're welcome by the way, because like if we had won, it would have been all me. I thought we did win. I have to tell my husband, he was like already spending his earnings. Oh my God. So <laughs> at 11.15, I wrote in our little lottery chat, Jackie wasn't at the house with us. I was like, oh my God, you guys, like we obviously didn't win the 830, but I had like the mega ball number and two other numbers and we literally won $57,000. I came up with the most, oh my God, by the way, we haven't even spoken about this this morning. You believed me? A hundred percent. And then Zach you and I were, respond in the chat. No, Zach and I were arguing because he was like, I was like, did you send the money? Because she won. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, great. So I w- we'll probably wind up with around like 6K. And he's like, great, I could do my closet. And I was like, well, we have to split that. Right. And he was like, well, I sent the money. And I was like, <laughs> no. you sent it for the both of us. I was oh. like, I need to get clarity from Claudia if the 20 was per couple or per person. Per couple. Right. So we were already oh my God, spending by the, the way, money. I'm cracking up that you guys <laughs> believed me because I was working. My texts were really convincing with the typos and the all caps, right? Yeah. No, I didn't even question it. Like you won 56K. Where are we spending it? I was oh like, God. dinner's on Claude. You didn't answer answer I figured like I would have get a phone call this morning I figured that you didn't answer like you knew I was just making shit up no I, I saw it I was excited and I put my phone back down and I was like okay Wait, you're being so weird and low-key if you had won fifty seven thousand dollars in the lottery okay, I would have called six you six of us won fifty seven thousand dollars it's about 25k divided by 
three. No, I get it when you boil it down, but the concept of winning $57,000 is huge. I would have called you. Yeah, but I knew I was seeing you this morning. Like we would talk about it on the show. Everyone would be so excited for you. You're so weird. I was no, totally I just kidding. Had, like, so much going on. And I think I saw it like in the middle of um, sleep in the middle of the night when I was like checking on Harry. So I wasn't like trying to get all amped up. I was like earnings. Cool. Oh my God, I cannot believe my prank worked. I'm literally quaking and I'm quaking at how like low key you're being about it. It's really weird. I'm extremely low key. You are, you are. Like you're just, I guess $57,000 is not a lot to you. Well, divided by two, divided by six. <laughs> um, but also that's just something about me. Like when something's a big deal, good or bad, I don't process it. That's true. And I don't make a big deal out of it. And it's not until years later, I'm like, wow, that was a really big deal. No, I like... I'm a drama queen. Like I make everything a moment, you know? Yeah. Um. So no, we won literally zero dollars. Damn. And I just feel- Yeah, I, I'm, Zach's not doing his closets. <laughs> oh my God, I cannot believe Zach thought I won. Well, he's with Ben now, so probably they'll get to that conversation <laughs> at some point, right? I hope so. Well, the thing with the Mega Millions is, by the way, nobody won last night. Now the jackpot that's being drawn on Friday is over a billion dollars. Um. So of course we will be going to Publix and getting more tickets. Let me know if you want in on my Ponzi I, scheme. Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to come to Publix with you. Okay. Um, which is just like a fun experience for us anyway, like being at Publix. Totally. Um, maybe I we'll need vlog to wear it. pants because I'm freezing and the grocery store is cold. Maybe we'll vlog it. Yeah, I was saying we need to do a pub sug mukbang, mm -hmm. but then you were being toxic about your diet. Yeah, no, I'm toxic. But You are, by the way, like you're the person that you hate. Yeah, I know. I just want you to know. So like next time and every time in my life that I've ever, you know, given, you know, had to be like, oh no, like calories or I'm mm -hmm. a diet, whatever. Like you've given me so much shit, yeah. not being supportive whatsoever. No, not at all. And I hope maybe you'll think twice next time. No, I won't because I feel like when you- You just expect everyone to be on your wavelength. No, no, no. When you give me shit about like me being on a diet right now, um, I can't lie. Like I do feel superior. So if I've made you feel that way, you're welcome. And second of all, I will do the pub sub today because I actually am starving. And three, like I cannot stress this enough that this is like a temporary mindset for me. Like I will be back to my normal self in like probably a few months. Yeah, but you know what? Do what you got to do. And I mean- I just want to get down to like a healthy weight. I'm not trying to be a model. I, I really believe that like the- The- What's, what is it? Like the conversation about dieting has gotten a little too out, out of control. hand. Like, I agree. You can go on a diet. Agreed. It's not a cancelable and, offense. And, and she could go on a diet and that doesn't mean that you have to go on a diet. And just because I've chosen to go on a diet does not mean that I think you should go on a diet or that anyone else should. And I'm not influencing anyone. It's just like my body and I'm choosing to do less with it, honestly. <laughs> or more, however you want to look at it. Yeah. Um, But it's definitely like a temporary thing. I just feel like I like to, you know, my weight fluctuates always, but I would like a more healthy starting point for when I start to eat like an animal again, you know? Yeah. And I'm sure that's not healthy and it's toxic, but like I just, um, it is what it is. I'm getting like out of breath, just doing menial things, you know? Mm. And I feel so much better. I'm like not so sluggish. No. And it's like every picture you take, it's like gorgeous. Yeah. Don't have to sweat it. I like mean, we're worried about angles on the show. I'm like, you don't have to worry about your angles anymore. That doesn't really um, hurt. I can't lie. You know, everyone telling me I look so great, but it's like, why weren't you telling me I looked great when I was fat? Actually, that's not true. People did, but you know, it feels different. Yeah, because you're working for it. And yeah, so I, it's feel like hard work I feel hard work is paying proud. off. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so that's enough about me and my toxic diet culture, but I, d I think I'm ready for a pub sub. Sounds good. I feel like I'm almost ready to re-enter toxic, uh, not toxic diet culture, but like not eating everything inside anymore. Do you think that you have um, had diet toxic diet tendencies? Yeah. 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 Have I not I never coped to that? No, I don't. Well, I mean, I know you do, but I don't know if we've ever actually <laughs> no, like, verbalized it. I feel like it. everyone's always yelling at me, like yeah. for what I say and how I say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, No, but no, I can't do the toxic dieting thing. One, because I'm too hungry. Two, because I'm breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So I actually like need nutrition and, <gasps> and all that. And it's also like unsustainable, but I just like want to start making healthier choices. Whereas, and I actually am feeling like being down here and being like in the suburbs and also walking around my house, like I'm taking so many more steps. My aura ring is like, Girl, go for also, good for you. Having like an actual kitchen where you can like store Pre fresh produce, prepare things. Yeah, no, there's definitely a healthier vibe here in the city. It's like you eat for convenience. Yeah, no, and that's really what I was doing. So now I'm ready to like take put a little more effort into making better choices. Speaking of breastfeeding, I had a really interesting conversation with Olivia this morning because we were talking about um, you know, we're I don't even want to say it, but like we're creeping on Yom Kippur time of year where we have to fast um and I was like you know what I don't know how long Jackie's planning on breastfeeding for but like she should just keep going so that she doesn't have to fast and Olivia's like if you're breastfeeding you still have to fast did you know that where does it say that Olivia literally spoke to Rabbi Samniki about it like when when she was pregnant 
I, and breastfeeding. Well, I do plan on still being breastfeeding by then. Um, it would have just been a perk to not have to fast. We'll see. And that's just a Jewish principle I take umbrage with, honestly. Like the fasting or the breastfeeding and fasting? The, breast, uh, the fasting, of course. But like, I understand it's atonement for our sins and I definitely should participate. But not supporting breastfeeding mamas. Mamas? Get them. I don't support her. Yeah. I'm sure you could find like different rabbis who have different. That's the thing views. about Judaism though. It's, right. it's an open text. But like with the rabbi that we love and respect, that's what he said. So I guess we got to find another rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like I would try to fast. And then if it was too hard, you know, I would see how it goes. I would wait and see because we love doing that. Because it's so important to see mm-hmm. only after waiting. And I can't stress that enough. Yeah. Um, The other thing I wanted to talk about is it's Wednesday, which means tonight we are doing an episode of Breaking Bread. And I just wanted to remind everyone, since we were off last week while Jackie was moving, Breaking Bread is back tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Pacific time on the Spotify live app. If you download the app, you can join the show live. You can write in the comments section, which is really more entertaining than the show, honestly. Yeah. Um, You can get brought up on stage. Listen to your girlies just recap. We actually will have so much to talk about on Breaking Bread tonight because I feel like the last three days, every time we wrap, like we still have more to talk about so it'll be really fun you can also listen live on just the regular spotify app but you won't be able to like you know be a real integral part of the show like with the comment section and stuff and if you're unavailable tonight wednesday 7 p.m eastern time our episodes do go on demand onto spotify on friday so there's fun for the whole family totally and that's just a little bit about me you covered the whole gamut what else is new with you well how's bryce how's rolled everything is good just so busy i mean every day just doing a million things uh do you want to interject sorry yeah i wanted to tell you something (laughs) i um i started the hotel nantucket i saw tell me everything um it's really good it's just like i've been in such a rut reading like you know erotic romances that i love so much um but i thought i would like you know pull back a little bit branch out and so it's taking an adjustment to read something different but also I've never read a book with a ghost in it and like I'm not a spooky girl I'm not into like paranormal activity some people's like whole personality is being like obsessed with ghosts and like cemeteries and Ouija boards um that's not me but um I kind of like love this ghost she's not like other ghosts no she's like a cutie she's like an unhinged 19 year old right who with the wisdom because she's lived 100 for 100 years. years yes but she died when she was 19 how what percent are you at you read so fast i don't know actually i didn't read a lot last night honestly i could not focus on anything but the lottery what happened so far where are you at has the hotel opened yeah 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 they just started spoiler alert getting bad reviews on um like trip advisor oh okay cute yeah no the ghost is really cute and she adds like a fun flavor i'm typically not a ghost girly but i'm always open to it if you read layla by colleen hoover i actually have it. it's another ghost tale and throughout the book i was like what the fuck but then by the end it made sense it made sense yeah. and I love when things make sense yesterday I started the new redheads book a flicker in the dark and it is spooky but so well written but it's just like gives you chills Ooh, I just got a chill up my spine yeah maybe, maybe grace <laughs> grace is working the AC I also can't stress enough how much I'm loving the kindle oasis like it is that kindle you need it like and if you didn't get it on prime day I feel bad for you because it's fucking expensive and I saved like over a hundred dollars on it but it's so premium like if you ever kindle girly and you're still with that my old now that I realize how fabulous this new one is I realize how slow my old one was you want to write Colleen Hoover C O L and now I'm like Colleen Hoover it's so premium it's like technology as an I I why can't I say AV? I don't know. You have an aversion. Technology as an AV girl is like so important to me, you know? Totally. And I'm enjoying the Oasis life as well. I wasn't ready for it you a were. year ago, but I'm ready for it now. I'm loving those little buttons. Question for you. Do you have your, what do you use the up and down for? Like down page, like do you use the down button for the next page or the up button? Excuse me. I can change it. Yeah. Because obviously I was I like, just- the down one should go right because it's closer <laughs> to my thumb. And when I opened the Kindle, it was just like, you have to use the top one. I reprogrammed mine a few days ago. You need AV assistance. Oh my God. (laughs) I was thinking how stupid that was. I'm like, if I had to guess a million dollars, obviously the one closer to my thumb is going to be next. What am I reading a book backwards? Yeah. Oh my God. You just blew my mind. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll show you how to do that. You're, that's what I'm here for. We're literally like, heck it. We're Elon Technologists. Musk. No, like Elon Musk literally wishes he knew much <laughs> about technology as we do. 
Elon Musk wishes he could reprogram his Kindle. No, I'm like literally embarrassed for him for how little he knows compared to us. It's like so sad. <laughs> Beyond. Beyond. Oh, we also have Dear Toasters today. Oh, wow. And they're pretty wild, honestly. Like, Oh, I cannot wait. We have so much to do. Should we just get into it? I mean, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't be against it. Okay. And you know, things come up along the way and we'll chat here and there about ourselves. So without further ado, do, 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 where are you? Strice Bruno Brothers are here. Bruno his aunties. Do, 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 where are you? The Strice Brothers are here sleeping. Do, 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 where are you? I took Theo for a walk this morning and he made the biggest dump I've ever seen a, a human being or a dog make. I, I meant to tell you. Did he have anything extra? Was He's it just a, been like, did he have a TBT? Well, actually, um, he has cornered Taylor. I'm literally having a stroke today. Cornered Kaylor. Mm-hmm. Every time Kaylor has a snack, it's in Theo's mouth. And she's just started to give it to him. Like, she's submissive. Like, at first she <laughs> used to fight, and now she just gives it. He's been eating so much off the floor. I've been giving him treats. Like, when him and Bruno are together, I'm always giving them greenies. So he's definitely eating a lot more, which I'm not mad about. But um, it's coming out in his poop. I could not believe the poop. That I almost so vomited. Funny. Bruno's also eating a lot more. He indulged in a turkey sandwich the other night. That sounds good. Last night, I found him going through the trash. He found himself an apple. Mm. and just other miscellaneous things. I'm happy for these dry spurs. The suburbs are treating them well. The suburbs are treating, I mean, look at them. Pooped. Pooped. So did you do the crunch? No, I don't think oh. so. Without further ado, it is time for the Fast Five Stories. Do. Where are you? <laughs> it is time for the Fast Five Stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. And today's episode is brought to you by Bowl & Branch. Bowl & Branch uses the best 100% organic, 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 <laughs> organic cotton threads on earth for a superior softness and a better night's sleep their sheets aren't just buttery breathable and impossibly soft to start they get softer with every wash you know i come on here once a week and rave about bowl and branch about how i literally can't sleep anywhere but my bed Mm -hmm. and you guys are gonna be like claudia like well how are you staying at olivia's house for so long homegirl has bowl and branch because she's a woman of taste a woman of elegance and honestly i've been sleeping like just as good even though i have to tell you i had a fright in the middle of the night last night but had nothing to do with bowl and branch it had to do with the book i was reading got it well i also have bowl and branch sheets on my guest bed Mm. for you the signature sheet the competition continues and i just want you to know that bowl and branch signature sheets which is what i have i think it's what olivia has too it's what you have the signature sheet collection come in nine different colors they're all neutral they come in all sizes from twin up to california king and you will immediately feel the difference of their iconic signature sheets 100 percent free from toxins which means no pesticides formaldehyde or harsh chemicals and they give you a 30 night risk-free trial so with free shipping and no returns on all orders they're so sure you're gonna love it and so am i so you can also get 20 percent off site-wide during the annual summer event happening now only at bowlandbranch.com it's their best offer of the year before the holidays so you better act now that's bowl and branch b-o-l-l-a-n-d branch.com for 20 percent off site-wide today's episode is also brought to you by legacy box the simplest and safest way to digitize all of your aging videotapes camcorder tapes film reels and pictures so they are preserved forever this is probably the number one brand people dm me like what was that company what was your mm. code just listen, you can buy the service now and only, and send it in when you're ready. But if you want to use our code, I would suggest doing it now. We've done it. You know, we were brought up in the VHS era. And a couple of years ago, we used to like buy all this weird equipment that didn't work just in an attempt to actually watch our VHSs because we obviously didn't have a VHS machine. And Legacy Box digitizes everything by hand. Home movies, you can transport yourself back to those unforgettable times. So each item is hand digitized by a team of over 200 trained technicians in Tennessee. Each kit includes everything you need to safely pack and send your recorded moments, including safety stickers for every item. They've been trusted by over a million families. They are the industry leader in professionally digitizing family memories. They can digitize 19 different types of media. So we obviously did VHS tapes. They can do super eight film. They can do pretty much anything you got. So take advantage of this exclusive offer today and then use your legacy box whenever you're ready. Again, don't message me. It's right here. That's legacybox.com slash toast to save 40% off legacybox.com slash toast legacybox.com slash toast. Take advantage of the limited time offer of 40% off and then discover the magic of bringing your past back to life. Great. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Our first story, Chris Rock is setting the record straight on the Will Smith's mm. o- Oscar slap. He says, I'm not a victim. Okay. 
Chris Rock has finally broken his silence regarding the slap heard around the world. Yeah, that shit hurt, motherfucker. But I shook that shit off and went to work the next day. After remaining silent, mo- mostly silent for months, the comedian actor addressed getting smacked by Will um, at the Oscars. He said, quote, anyone who said words hurt has never been punched in the face. <laughs> he declared while performing alongside Kevin Hart and Dave Chappelle at MSG on Saturday. Oh my God, that actually sounds so fun. Obviously, like the one time I'm not in New York. Thanks. <laughs> Also, during the event, Kevin Hart brought a live goat on stage and introduced it as Will Smith. Oh, my God. I'm actually, like, really against, like, animals in crowded spaces. Are you? Oh. Like, I actually really hate that. So, okay, the story show, was just ruined for me. I won't show me. you the picture. But then, Chris Rock performed at PNC Bank Arts Center in Holmdale, New Jersey, the most premium <laughs> um, entertainment experience in the tri-state area. And he said, I'm not a victim, motherfucker. I don't go to the hospital for a paper cut. No, no. Um... It's just, you know what I didn't expect? Hmm. I didn't expect to, like, be so into Chris Rock, you know? I think we all, like, had a soft spot in our hearts for him after the slap because it was so fucking crazy and it was so, like, embarrassing and painful for everyone. Um, And then the, like, bell of it all. And I just, like, I didn't expect to be so, like, into him, you know? Like, intrigued by what's Chris doing? What's Chris saying? (laughs) What's Chris up to? What's Chris feeling? Like, I'm more of a Chris Jenner girl than a Chris Rock, but... That might change. That might change. This Probably show looks not. amazing. Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, and Kevin Hart. I mean, what a lineup. I've actually never seen any of Chris Rock's stand-up, but it's like Ben's favorite. Ben is Chris Rock's number one fan. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're like doing a tour together or it was like a one-time thing at MSG, but if any of you guys were there who are listening, I'm so jealous. That sounds amazing. Literally amazing. I saw Kevin Hart at MSG. How was it? It was great. He, I was the most people ever fit into MSG because like he had a teeny because tiny stage. Because he's so stage. small. <laughs> he had a teeny tiny stage in the middle and they were able to put as many seats as they've ever put in there. It was How many shows night. did he do? I'm not sure. I just went to one. That's cool. I would want to see him do stand up. He's so funny. For so long, he was my absolute favorite comedian and stand up comedian. Yeah, he's great. But then he was usurped. By Claudia <gasps> Ashray. Oh, oh, that reminds me. Tickets available at girlwithnojob.com slash tour. West Hampton Beach, New York. Red Bank, New Jersey. New Haven, Connecticut. More dates coming soon. Um, I added uh, uh, another show. I was thinking, like, got to get to Alabama. I want the Alabama girls to, like, know I'm coming. Bama. Bama. Roll tie. I'm literally going to be, like, such an Alabama girly. Like, War Eagle. What's that? Oh, my God. Okay. So, I, obviously, you wouldn't know that. because Is it from TikTok? No, no, because you've never been to Alabama, and I only learned it the first time I went. Got it. Obviously, when I went, I was like, roll tide, like, whatever the fuck that means. And, like, it's half and half. So there's two schools, Auburn and University of Alabama. University of Alabama is roll tide, okay. and Auburn is war eagle. So, okay. like, whichever your fr- your school is, like, that's the phrase you stick with. Okay, so you're war eagle, I'm roll tide. No, I didn't say that. Um, I was just teaching I you. think I'm rolled tide. I'm definitely rolled tied probably <laughs> i'm definitely rolled all tied so you're an anti-semite <laughs> yikes <laughs> honestly i just want to let you know if you've ever like dm'd me or left a comment that starts with yikes or ends with yikes like you will be blocked or includes yikes in the middle because people who say yikes on the internet in like an ironic in derogatory a ironic way like yeah yeah we say it like making fun of those people but right. the people who use it in their everyday it's karen jargon energy are the worst people on the internet i literally like screenshotted a message the other day it was so fucking condescending <laughs> like yikes and it was about the couch it was like chill the fuck out <laughs> yikes you guys have lost your touch that couch i'm like you're fucking ugly okay <laughs> i want to see your couch yeah facetime me <laughs> yikes i hate the word yikes <laughs> so much me too yikes <laughs> and it comes with that face you know yikes <laughs> if you've ever said that like you're done you're done Okay, well, are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Why not? Because there's drama between Candace Cameron Bure and JoJo Siwa. I saw. Candace, Tan- Candace Cameron Bure is addressing JoJo Siwa, calling her the rudest celebrity in a TikTok video. She said, now it is all good. But for those of us who are just hearing the news for the first time, such as myself, JoJo posted a video to her social media platform showing her quickly fa- flashing photos of celebrities. So let me tell you, it's a trend on TikTok. Yes, that I've, I've surmised. Okay, so for those who don't know, let me okay, just say. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You basically pull up different people's Instagram profiles on your phone and then you write, you take a video of yourself and you write like 
you know, worst hookup I ever had. And then you flash the phone really quick. And some people have been able to like slow down the video, screen record them and figure out who people are. But like, if you do it really fast, there's like actually no way to see it. So it was like worst hookup, you know, celebrity I have the most tea on, you know, rudest person I've ever met and other influencers and celebrities are doing it to each other. And I, I cannot tell you how many times I have literally downloaded the person's TikTok and scrolled through to try and like screen record. It's so hard to figure out, but somebody figured out JoJo's. I saw they do edit it and showed every single person that she did. Wow. Okay. So she did the nicest, the coolest, her crush. And she also did the rudest and flashed the phone to reveal Candace Cameron Bure. She didn't provide any further details about their alleged interaction, but now Candace Cameron Bure is, I'm just going to have to call her Candace. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. hundred percent. Has taken to Instagram saying that she was shocked and had no idea where it came from. She said, I immediately tried to reach out to her through mutual friends and my publicist contacted her manager and I DM'd her because I didn't know what happened. I just think I it's funny know. that Candace Cameron Bure and Jojo Siwa have a mutual friends oh I'm sure like I just find that interesting yeah she said so I was finally able to talk to Jojo this morning I called her and we had a great conversation she was like hey how are you doing I was like well I've been better what <laughs> happened so Jojo told Ka Candace that she didn't think her video was going going to go viral calling it a silly TikTok trend and saying that she didn't think it was a big deal but then Candace told her that it was a big deal and asked her what she did to her I'm sure mm -hmm. she was like getting dragged to filth to filth because so, Candace said, I only remember that we met at the Kelly Clarkson show and that went really great. Oh, and that's jo iconic. Jojo said, yeah, it was really great. You were super nice and all of that. She actually didn't want to tell me because she said it's so silly. She felt bad and that's why it just wasn't a big deal to her. But then she said, I met you at the Fuller House premiere when I was 11 years old and we were all on the red carpet. I had come up to you and said, can I have a picture with you? And you said to me, not right now. Then you proceeded to do what you were doing and take pictures with other people on the red carpet. So Candace ref profusely apologized to Jojo and Jojo said, you weren't even mean and I get it now as an adult when you're on the red carpet and everything's happening, you're being pulled in different directions. But at that time I was at an 11, I was 11. And then Candace apologized saying, I broke your 11 year old heart. I didn't take a picture with you. I feel so sorry and um, crummy. I and now there's been a reprochement. Um, here are words that I literally never thought would come out of my mouth ever. Like just as for Candace Cameron Bure, like sounds like Jojo Siwa was being like a big shit starter. And like when she was like, no, I don't even want to say what it is. It was giving um, Crystal Kung Minkoff, mm -hmm. like Sutton said the craziest thing. So offensive, dark. What is it? I can't say it. So first of all, I'm always doubtful when people say that. And second of all, literally if, if that's what happened, everything Jojo just described, uh, that's really not rude. And it doesn't sound like a consistent story because why would Candace Cameron Bure take pictures with a bunch of people on a red carpet and not Jojo Siwa? Like when she was 11, like fans. Yeah. No, well, she was, well, she was a, probably a celebrity at on that dance point. Like moms. A, yeah, just a kid celebrity. Um, I agree. I mean, it's really a nothing burger. It just goes to show that every other celebrity must be, you know, the nicest person on the planet. If right, if that's was, the worst thing that's happened to you in Hollywood. Experience. But what Candace Cameron Bray said is that no matter how many followers you have, even a 10 second trending TikTok video can do damage because yeah. our words matter and our actions matter. And that's the thing. It's like, so much of TikTok is just putting people on blast, mm -hmm. both, you know, probably righteously and also Rightfully, in yeah. a shit starting sort of way. And I really feel like that people have really made like careers of just like trolling and and calling people out and blowing things out of proportion like that instacart driver who said he made kylie right the, gave kylie the ingredients for her sandwiches like right everyone's just like everyone like sharing their story like i saw this celebrity one time and she was so rude like you don't know what someone else is going through like you only see things like through your perspective, perspective. and it's like and then you say it as fact and people run with it because like it's fun for them right no but honestly this is like like kind of extremely losery of Jojo Siwa. I'm, I'm really shocked because first of all, it doesn't sound like there was really like an incident. And then also the way Candace describes the phone call, it's like Jojo got like, like called out. Like yeah. there was nothing there. Yeah. How old no, is she Jojo said, Siwa? She, now she is. She must be 18, right? Now she's grown. She is, give me one second, 19. Oh, wow. Okay. So she's like, she's still like a kid, but like she should know better than like as a celebrity to start dumb drama like this. Like- yeah, but that's the trend. And that's what I'm saying. Like TikTok yeah. is toxic and people are just obsessed with like- Call out know, culture. Getting famous and getting views because they're putting, uh, they're putting embarrassing someone, else. someone yeah. else. No, I completely agree with you. Oh, great. We're on the same page. Are we ever not? <laughs> <laughs> no, except about TikTok. And Olivia Rodrigo being a one-hit wonder. I never said she was a one-hit wonder. I said it was too soon to call. Sure. No, that's what I said. Like I stand by that. Sure. Oh, these microphone brand is sure. S-H-U-R-E. So 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> That's my joke. I was the one walking around Guitar Center saying, sure. Sure you were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss Guitar Center. <laughs> Let's go back. You I'm know, gonna... I think we need headphones for that. We do. Do we have to go to Guitar Center? I think we do. Oh my God. I think we do. They'll be so happy to see us. My day just blew wide open. They're going to say, hey, girlies, how was the equipment? And I was like, oh. Uh, hey, you how have... about you listen to, your, listen to Wait, it I'm yourself? Like, Corporate hasn't called you yet because literally the biggest podcast in the world Literally. reference your amazing customer service. I figured you'd be the president of the company by now. No, I would say to him, why don't you go to your Apple podcasts, go to the comedy chart. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. And why don't you go to episode number seven? We were six yesterday. Oh, we're seven and eight right now. We are literally like chart topping, top charting. It's so cute. Seven and eight. We are so cute. We are so cute. Like who's cuter, funnier, more interesting than us? We should go. I'll give you a minute. <laughs> Nobody. The Strice Brothers. Oh, fuck yeah. We should go to Guitar Center when our episode is like as high as it's going to be. So it's at six. Six or five, yeah. Okay. And then wait for them to be like, how did it go? Oh, oh, I just happened to bring my <laughs> iPad with a screenshot of the chart. If you want to know. Just want to check it out. <laughs> Check it out. Are you ready for our next story? Only if it's a story that's brought to you by Away. It is. It and actually really is because it's some airport drama. Right, no, and it's so appropriate because the last time I was at Olivia's house, I had to leave my black carry-on Away suitcase at her house, and that was literally six months ago, and I haven't gotten it back. And it has been like, like made a, like a visible impact on my life, not having my suitcase. Away offers a range of suitcases, bags, and other travel essentials made of different materials like polycarbonate and aluminum in a variety of colors and sizes. So whatever you're packing, wherever you're going, Away has a luggage that will help you make your next trip more seamless. They've got four wheels. They've got hard shells. They've built in laundry bags. They come with like a little magic eraser. So anytime, you know, a bag handler is like a little too rough, a little scuff it out. Oh, have you seen those videos? They're extremely rough these days. They're insane. So <laughs> travel is so uncertain, but the one thing we can be certain of is like Away's suitcases, bags, and travel accessories are designed to make moving through the world a lot more seamless. Travel makes us more, you know, more dynamic, more interesting, and it gives us different perspectives. So no matter where you're going, mm. you can rely on Away's range of I travel products to solve real travel problems and get you there. So it's a TSA approved bag. They have that combination lock that is totally TSA approved. They have four 360 degree spinner wheels, which makes it so easy to- What were people doing before four 360 degree spinner wheels? Especially I, in, um, excuse me, carpeted airports. I am embarrassed to say I have a few pieces of luggage still for when I need like backup, backup mm -hmm. that are on two wheels and like using those while I'm pushing Pushing my away. It's just like the past and the future. They offer free shipping and returns on any order within US, Europe, Canada, and Australia, except for the personalized products. And they have a hundred day free trial on everything that they make. Ooh. So you take the product on the road, you live with it, you travel with it, even get lost with it for a hundred days. And then if you decide it's not for you, you can return any non-personalized item for a full refund during that period. Whoa. No ifs, ands, or buts. So get your hundred day trial started and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases and bags at awaytravel.com slash toast. That's awaytravel.com slash toast. I just bought new away suitcases. I love my pink ones and I was using them and I actually needed more because I was moving and we just have, and also like traveling with a baby, like you mm -hmm. just need tons of crap. So I bought the biggest bag and the medium sized bag in that dark green. And so it's like, I have the, my green bags and my pink bags and so toasty. So toasty. I have my toast stickers like all over my seat. I have my uh, limited edition camp toast luggage tags on Sick mine. The, if you know, you know. Next story, some airport news brought to you by Away. Erica Jane served with a $50 million lawsuit upon returning home from a Lux Hawaii vacation. Following her Lux trip to Hawaii, Erica Jane was served with papers for a $50 million racketeering lawsuit when she arrived back in uh, LA on Friday night. In exclusive pics obtained by page six, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star was seen leaving LA International Airport when a woman approached her and handed her two thick stacks of documents. A rep for Erica's did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Someone was videoing and it's honestly like, it's mortifying to see. Yeah. Um, but what I also thought was really interesting was that she was on vacation in Hawaii with Rinna and Diana. So why was she at LAX? Mm. Like wouldn't they have flown private to Hawaii? Yeah, from LA. with Diana. Right. That is an interesting point. I also just thought it was interesting that the three of them were hanging out off But that track based on, I mean, I'm so behind on Beverly Hills. I haven't turned a TV, don't even have a TV right now. Um, So I don't know what's going on. But like Rinna and Diana seems yeah. like, uh, I mean, Diana seems. Well, her and Rinna are Rinna. close. Yeah. 
Um, the video is horrifying and it's like so embarrassing because I'm sure like at first Erica thinks it's like a fan, maybe right. wanting an autograph or just like, you know, people do crazy things to public figures. Um, and I think like you see the moment where it settles that she's like being, and you know, it was legit because it had one of those paper clips, not like a classic paper clip. The one that's like a clamp. Of course, because it's so many documents. Because it was like this big thick stack and it was just like, Honestly, it actually made me feel bad for her because it was just really embarrassing with so many cameras around. And Rena was like, <laughs> why were there so many cameras around? Because, you know, those girlies love to call the paps on themselves. You think they called the paparazzi on themselves? For sure. You think so? I don't think the paparazzi like really, really needs, ev- you know, Erica and Rena no, getting no. off a plane. Like if they were there, it's because, you know, they call them. So they called them and then like she got served. Like, I just think if Erica wanted to go on a trip, fly home commercial, like she could make it through the airport That's what without I'm paparazzi. That's what I'm saying. So I think it's like so weird that. Oh, you think it had something to do with there. the serving? I don't know. And some of the pictures are clearly like an iPhone situation. Yeah, the video that went viral that started the story was someone just filming, I think, on their iPhone. Like a fan saw Erica at the airport. Perhaps. Or was it someone who, like, they, the part of the people who served her just to confirm that they served her? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I just think it's really interesting. And honestly, I mean, she looks cute no matter what, but she doesn't look like someone who was knew the paparazzi was going to be there. I was, um, I and think I'm sure was, she was glad she was wearing a mask because you can't see her face. When you were on maternity leave, oh, it was when Olivia Wilde got served with those custody mm-hmm. papers during CinemaCon and it was like so awkward. Taylor Strecker was um, my co-host that day and we were just talking about how like getting served is so crazy and I asked her if she's ever been served or whatever and she was like, no, but... I had to serve for her divorce. Mm -hmm. And she was like, it was like, you think a lot about it. You can choose where to do it. You don't want to, if you care about the person, you don't want to embarrass them, like do it at work, you know? Um, And she said it was like a really crazy experience. Got to serve someone. Who's it going to be? I think Bryce. I'm going to serve Strice then. Or Charlie Puth. (laughs) A cease and desist? No, literally like cease and desist for posting on TikTok. Emotional distress. No, literally. So the who knows what this lawsuit is regarding? I'm sure someone does, but it's just, you know. Just more, and at this more point. More in the saga. And I actually feel like this story wouldn't, you know, it's another lawsuit for Erica Jane. Right. It, honestly, I'm immune to them, but the fact that she was served publicly, there's pictures and videos, that's the story. Yeah, that's the story, but also, I don't know, I, I'm, I think Erica Jane's at this place where, like, like, at least for me, I don't really care. Like, I fully believe now, like, she really probably didn't know that much. And, like, maybe if she had investigated, like, she could have figured it out herself. But I don't think she really cared that much about Tom, what Tom was doing for a living, just, like, was happy living her life. And she's bearing the brunt of everything because Tom is incoherent and lives in a home. Um, but my vibe now is, like, I really don't care. Like, she's way past, like, the drama, in my opinion. I'm sure yeah, her I feel legal like, troubles are far from over. But Oh, yeah, but I feel like for her, it's just, like, What's another lawsuit? You know, she's right. going to spend the, like, a another very, one. <laughs> she's going to spend a really long time in court. In court. And it's going to be really expensive. Yeah. It's expensive to be her. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. yeah. It is. Oh. It's Bryce, okay, don't even start. It's okay, boys. Shh. Are you ready for our next story? I. Really am. It seems as though The View has selected their replacement for Meghan McCain, finally. Oh, this is like Jeopardy. I didn't even know we were still doing this. Right. This is like Jeopardy, except, and this is still a report. It's not confirmed. They haven't announced it on the show yet, but page six seems to know for certain that Alyssa Farah Griffin will be replacing Meghan McCain on The View. Uh, Who the fuck is that? She was the former uh, communications director for Donald Trump's White House. Okay. So conservative girly. Yep. Um, don't know who that is, and no, again, I don't know this who is it is either, and that's why there was so much hype I after know. Megan left. Like, who, this is literally Mayim Bialik. Like, who cares? Yeah, except you knew Mayim, and I right. mean, if you watch a view, she's been one of the people who's been in rotation. I a thought lot. they already replaced her with that woman, Anna Navarro. Right, but who would torture themselves and watch the view enough to right, find right. out? So perhaps you know she did a good job, but I'm glad they made a choice. Yeah, and I felt like for a while like they weren't going to make a choice. I thought they already had. With Anna Navarro. For some reason, I follow The View, I think, on TikTok. Because they followed me, and I was like, let me be respectful, you know, of Whoopi and the crew. Um, so I see clips sometimes, and it's always that woman, Anna Navarro. I literally thought she, like, I thought this was done. Well, she might be a host, but not the one replacing Megan. No, she was definitely just, like, a like a frequent temporary queen. Mm-hmm. But um, I guess she didn't do a good job, because she didn't get the job. Yeah, and I also feel like this could have been like a really great opportunity to make a splash, you know, with right. like someone who big, big polarizing. And, yeah. And at least for me, maybe cause I don't Can watch I see the a picture of her. Like, no, it, honestly, I, I don't, 
I don't know her. No, I never seen. I'm sorry to this woman. I'm sorry to this woman. I don't know this woman. But good luck in the job. Good luck. You know, uh, the more time that goes by, the more Megan shares about her experience yeah. and how awful it was. You know, I cannot imagine why anyone would want that job. Obviously, like it's an amazing opportunity, yada, yada, yada. Um, and if you're one of the other four women who I think align more politically, like it's probably so much fun. Like we're all ganging up on the other <laughs> girl. But, like, I totally get why you would want to be Sunny or any of the other girls. Um, I cannot for the life of me imagine why anyone would want to be like the no. other person. Um, it sounds horrible and everyone leaves. Like I don't see a rotating chair for any of the other women. Like right. Sunny and Wooby, they've been there forever. Right. So, Joy. Joy. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> so um I really hope this girl has like you know a thick skin good mental health and I hope it's a really big paycheck because yeah. there's honestly there's probably a number that's like okay I would do something like that for that public amount. humiliation on a daily <laughs> basis <laughs> so I hope it's worth whatever I pro- they're paying. I probably don't think it is like honestly no but whatever I mean if, if she is the one and she signed her contract then it was enough to do this job yeah no I'm really wishing her the best of luck like <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yikes, girl. I really good luck. Good good luck. And hopefully they'll make the official announcement soon. And I'm just glad they made a choice. Yes, you know? the Megan stuff I find really interesting because mm-hmm. Megan is conservative girly, but she's also just like deeply um connected in the political space. So like mm-hmm. she knew Whoopi before. They uh, they knew her parents. I believe she knew Joy. And now like the vibe that she's putting out afterwards is like Joy was literally like horrible to her. But what's so interesting is like when it was all going down and you would see clips from the show where like they had a really bad day or they yeah. got into a big fight and it was like oh my god how could these people still be co-workers they would all tweet. how did they not hate each other then like you would see Megan go on watch what happens live and she's like no I love joy we have a mutual respect we talked about it after the show and like it's totally fine I'm like okay so it's totally fine like these people just bounce back from these things but now when Megan talks about it, it's like oh no it really was a horribly toxic work environment it looked ex- it felt exactly how it looked and it's just yes because I used to think I'm like you know Megan is like you know the only one who has a difference of opinion but she every time she tweets about it or talks on Watch What Happens Live she's like that's just the job like I love these women and we have different beliefs and and I was like yes I'm like that's America baby like so (laughs) mature and now it's like actually there was bullying harassment like everyone was mean to each other we all hated each other and I was like damn like because I I choose to believe in a world where like people can have a difference of opinions and still love and respect one another right and like for a while while Megan was on there and like being on Watch Happens Live all the time saying like it's just you know politics we're still friends I was like yes like this is proof and I feel like like a couple years ago when Megan was on The View and like she was making news about like a moment between her and Whoopi we said how like that's the honestly like a really cool thing about The View is like that was meant to be I think one of the points of the show it's The View and there are many points of view and we're just gonna have conversations about that but like so many people have written books after their time on The View and it's like it's actually not like that at all and I don't think it's really ever been like that no and I think especially in the months since Megan left it's now just the one view right and it's just and there's no one well like, we'll now. see we'll see what happens what's her name uh Alyssa Farah Griffin we'll see what happens to Alyssa yeah best we'll of luck girly best of luck are you ready for a fifth and final story which is a little random news but I started following the New York Post on Instagram and they post like all these random news stories to their feed and I thought this one would be fun to talk man about. with eight arms climbs out of well it's, that he's lived in for 75 years it's stuff like that but that's what the fifth and final story is meant to be human about. interest it's human interest so a woman is advertising for a farmer to marry her best friend okay these two girlies gorgeous girls oh my god beyond gorgeous wait those are just regular girls or not regular like models? girls from New Zealand. One oh, of them from, girls from New Zealand are really pretty. Yeah. One of them moved to uh, farm country mm-hmm. and to marry a farmer who she Aww. loves and she's living the farm chummer life. Oh God, this is literally a book. Right. And she has a friend named Amber who wants to live the farm life too. Like and so they could all be like four farmers together going on date nights to the barn. And yeah. And Amber wants a reason to like leave the city and move to the King Count country region. And oh I feel God. like we're helping Amber by putting this on the show. Right. No, we're spreading. And so her friend, Liv is looking for a great farmer to marry her friend Amber so that Amber can move to the farm. And what kind of, where did Liv put this like advertisement? On New Zealand Farming Facebook group. I'm literally not okay. This is, get you a friend like Liv. And then Liv posted these photos of Amber. <gasps> she's like, gorgeous. She's literally so gorgeous. Wait, if somebody doesn't option this story into like a Hallmark Lifetime movie, honestly, or like a romantic comedy book, I could, so, cause this is literally the book that I just read. It's two books, but it's not about farmers. It's about two regular like, college grads who end up both marrying like Brad Pitt 
like two different Brad Pitts. And it's like, they live next door to each other and it's so cute. Oh my God, like the first dream. book, the first book is about the first girl. And then she, the second group book is about the girl who meets the other movie star through the first girl. So this sounds like it could be that. Like somebody needs to write a book about this. It's so cute. It's so cute, but we also need the happily ever after. So if you are in New Zealand, in the farming community, ideally the king country region, why don't you message Liv and get to know Amber? No, and also, okay, I'm like thinking about this being turned into the movie because these girls are so beautiful and they're Australian. They should play themselves. Uh, Madison Brown from Kirby from Dynasty. Like she needs to play the one who needs the boyfriend, Amber. She looks just like her. Okay, perfect. And I, let me see the other girl. We, do, we need to cast. We want authentic Australian. Okay, so this is Amber with her dog and she like clearly loves the bucolic lifestyle. And this is the two of them. That must be Liv. They're literally both so beautiful. I cannot believe this isn't a story about models. Like, <laughs> yeah, those girls look like that and they're not famous. That's no, insane. No, and it's like you're advertising for a boyfriend when you look like that. No, there's no hope for any of you. Go home. <laughs> Go home. If this girl needs to put up a billboard, I've never seen a more beautiful girl in my life. And that's just like a regular Facebook photo. It's not an edited Instagram picture. Yeah, no, there's no filter on it. There's no like colors. There's no visco. No, literally girls from that part of the world are just And stunning. Amber was a bridesmaid at Liv's wedding. Here she is being- <gasps> Amber's lit. I'm literally like upset. Like- I put on d full glam today for this stupid show. I look and like a rat. You'll never be Amber. No, and I'll never be Amber with no makeup on at a vineyard, you know? No, and um, that's just your cross to bear. And if someone at the New York Post is watching this, which I feel like you are, because you're always just like, you know, obsessed with the toast, um, please follow up. Like, we need to find out what happens next. Please follow up. Get in touch with Liv. Get a statement. See what happens with Amber. And, and toasters, we, if you know any, like, fine Australian farmers... Figure it out. Yeah, check out this story. You can see Liv's Facebook page and you could get involved in the process. And if any, you know, reality shows want to go over there and film the process. No, honestly. I would be definitely watching that. I don't think I would watch it because I think a reality show like would actually ruin it. They'd set her up on like fake dates. I I want this to play out however it plays out. And then I would like a really premium either movie or book about it. Love it. We need um like. No, if we had a production company. Toast Productions. We need Lucy Score to literally write this no, book. We would send pro Toast Productions oh. out there and we would make the movie. It's like Reese. If making, we had Hello Sunshine, it's yeah, like I was Reese the same making thing. movies of books that she wants to see into movies, which I we're love doing it that backwards. For her. <laughs> we're making stories, real life stories. Into books or in movies. Yeah. No, Hello Sunshine needs to get on this immediately. Yeah. In collaboration with Toast Studios. Yeah. TNN. So those were the past five stories. I feel as though you absolutely needed to know them. You definitely needed to know that last one. Warmed the cockles of my heart. And we're not done yet. So we've only been in for 48 minutes, you guys. Like there's so much more to come. So much more. Because it's Wednesday, which means Dear Toasters. So our weekly advice segment every Wednesday, we do Dear Toasters. You can write into us totally anonymously. We'll not blow up your spot. And you could write in about anything. Today we have some cheating stuff. We have some boyfriend stuff. We have some red flags. We have some friendship stuff. You can write into deartoasters at gmail.com if you need advice on anything. We also do Unburden Yourselves on Monday. So email unburdenyourselves at gmail.com if there's something really embarrassing that you did. Also, for next week on Monday, Unburden Yourselves, we're doing like a special anxiety themed oh cute unburden yourself so over the weekend if you guys have any really embarrassing things that are giving you terrible anxiety when you were drunk write into unburden yourselves at gmail.com it's gonna be a really fun segment brought to you by spritz oh because totally. monday is the spritz one year anniversary that's crazy i know so it'll be exciting what a year but the regular deer toasters are brought to you by modern fertility we're supposed to go to the OBGYN once a year for our annual checkups but checking in with our fertility isn't usually a thing until we're ready for kids but that's why modern fertility was created it's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick you mail it in with a prepaid label you'll get easy and personalized results within 10 days you'll get insights into your hormone levels your ovarian reserve which is basically how many eggs you have compared to other women your age and other important fertility factors. The results go deep into what every hormone means, and you can also download the results to review with your doctor for next steps. Traditional testing for your fertility can cost over $1,000, but Modern Fertility gets you the same exact information in a fraction of the price. If you go to modernfertility.com slash toast, you can get an additional 20% off your test. So the test is $179. It's $199, but with our $20 off, it's $179. So they're offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash toast. It means your test will cost $179 instead of the thousands it could cost at your doctor. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash toast. That's modernfertility.com slash toast. Great. All right, you ready for Dear Toasters? Ready. Hi, Jackson Claude, my queens. Uh -huh. 
A few months ago, I went on a date with a guy who gave me major red flags, but for some ridiculous reason, I decided to give this guy another chance. He invited himself to my house and immediately upon arrival asked why I didn't have dinner ready. We ordered Chinese and when the food arrived, he insisted that I make his plate by dividing the plate into three sections and delivering it to him. As we're eating, he spilled on his shirt and then proceeded to rip off his shirt and asked me to launder, quote, it. At this point, I was cringing, but decided to launder the shirt as this man was unhinged. I retrieved the shirt from the dryer as he walked to my bedroom. I told him to leave, but he didn't acknowledge me. He got undressed and went to bed. I frantically called my friends to help, but this man was already naked and passed out, so I slept on the couch. I woke up to the sound of my shower, followed by this man asking me to make him a coffee. At this point, I flipped out and told him to leave. Flash forward to today, I am dating an incredible man who asked me to spend the weekend at his family's cabin. I decided to do some digging on Facebook, and that's when I saw it. My boyfriend's cousin is the launder my shirt guy, and I will be spending the weekend with him. What do I do? I already told my boyfriend the story, but never told him who the person was. Do I tell him? Do I pretend I don't know his cousin? Help. Sincerely, how the hell did I get here? Oh, my God. That's literally a book. That is a book. That is... Chutzpah and also scary. Yeah. That was starting to scare me. Right. Like getting undressed and getting in your bed. And Up you until that point, it was just him being a dick. But right. like, no, then- you told him to leave and he went to sleep in your bed naked. Honestly, sounds like he might not have a home. That's what I was thinking too. Anyway, he, he probably spilled on purpose so that he could get a fresh shirt, oh get a God. free meal and a place to stay. Oh my God. He wow. should just be nicer to women and women would just like let them stay at his house, their house for a few days and use the laundry and take a shower. Totally. But he's in- definitely, by the way, he's definitely was definitely at the time probably homeless. Yeah, because that's a thing that men do. They couch surf with women Yeah, so they don't have to pay rent. There was that article in the New York Post all those years ago about a guy who hasn't lived in an apartment for a year and has literally slept with different women for like a few days at a time to have a place to stay. It was crazy. Crazy. But anyways, in response to your question, tell your boyfriend that it was him. Because you did nothing wrong, so there's no reason. You're going to be feeling weird all weekend and you don't want your boyfriend to think you're feeling weird about being with his family or that you're not sure about the relationship or that there's something else going on. Just like honesty is the best policy. You have nothing to be ashamed of. There's no reason why you wouldn't share. And nobody knows the story. No. And he already knows the story. So now you could be like, by the way. And it doesn't sound like you, you know, you went on a date with his cousin and now you're realizing it's his cousin. So you're going to tell him this whole story. It's like, you already told him about this crazy story. Sleep with him. So like you have like there's nothing weird. There's nothing weird. This is so crystal clear. This is so crazy bizarre. This is like one of those things where it's like the world is so small. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry that that you had to experience that and now you're like reliving it because I'm sure it's horrifying. But definitely tell your boyfriend. And also ask if maybe at the time, like maybe he fell upon hard times, just because I'm curious. Yeah. Because it sounds like he was using you for like a hot meal, a bed, and a new shirt. Yeah. All right, good luck with that. Let us, I would love an update on you. All right, next up. Hello, Jax, Claude, Razzins, Razz. Oh, and I'm so glad that you wrote when we have the, all four together. Here and this today. is from two girlies they wrote together. We are longtime it's toasters. It's like when a book is written by two authors. Mm-hmm. We're such nerds. <laughs> we are two longtime toasters and best friends who no. need your help. We have a friend, Lynn, and she's a part of our very tight group friend group that has been together for most of our 20s and into our 30s. We are all very close, but unfortunately, Lynn can be really cheap at times, despite having one of the more lucrative jobs of our, of our friend group. She also likes to, quote, host parties, we think mainly to avoid the cost of an Uber to get anywhere else. It's gone to the point where every time she, quote, hosts a party, the plan... Uh, The plans are solidified, then shortly before the event, everyone in the group is given specific items to bring, whether it's food, drinks, or both. We started realizing that we are all bringing the entire party, about 90% of the food slash alcohol, while she provides whatever leftovers are currently in her pantry, like nuts or crackers. While none of us mind contributing and we never show up to anywhere empty-handed, we are starting to feel taken advantage of because of how disproportionate her contributions are at her own party, and she seems to have no problem with it. How do we make her see the issue with this as she's constantly inviting us over? We are a very non-confrontational group of girls, and we like to keep the drama low but this is getting impossible to ignore any advice you can provide would be greatly appreciated p.s we will send a follow-up you just need to give her a taste of her own medicine you say parties at my house this time lynn you're bringing the this that and the other everyone else like just do exactly what she's doing but before she can do it i would also avoid lynn's house like the plague like the next time she wants to host a party all the girls should be like oh we already decided we're going um bowling tonight like meet us there at 10 yeah like do not go to her house don't give her a choice in this situation she doesn't have choices yeah it sounds like she's the only one with like a little bit of balls in the group so she's taking advantage of the fact that you guys are low drama non-confrontational and that's how you're getting walked all over but she is taking advantage of you guys if she is not contributing 
it, buying stuff for the party and just like thinks that having it at her place is contribution enough. It, mm-hmm. You know, once in a while it is. Yeah, but, but you're that, literally forbidden from going to her house. That's how you, yeah. the fact that you keep going and she keeps getting away with it is why she keeps doing it. Like, no, wouldn't like, you? You just need to put the plans in the chat. Hey, I was talking to Jenny and we're going to Jenny's house this weekend. Um, I'm going to bring this. If Lynn, you could get that. Yeah. Felicia, get that, you know. Lynn, Felicia, Jenny. <laughs> I'm just, I find it interesting. Like when you make up names, like yeah, what no, comes to I mind? Never really, those, Felicia I, is unique, like really different. Not like other names. I don't know what inspired these names. This is just how I'm seeing your group of friends. I love that. I'm always like a Sarah or Rachel. I go biblical. That's true. Yeah. You can never go wrong. I don't know where I pull With from. Isaac, Jacob and Abraham. I'll have to think. Maybe probably for books. What was the name of the girl who was having everyone over? Lynn. Lynn. Well, actually, they wrote Lynn Manuel Miranda, but I just abbreviated it because I didn't want to. It's like word jumbo, and I have a hard time reading these your toasters as is. Yes, yes. But I did appreciate their creativity and toasty references. <laughs> Are you ready for our third and final? This one's pretty wild. Okay, I'm ready. Hello, Jackson Claude. Brass and stress. So far, these are clear cut. You know, yes, no more dilemmas. Sometimes you guys really confound me. Right, and we really don't know which route to take, but so far I feel like it's been- I'm 100% certain. And I think you probably will be certain about this one too. I love certainty. I'm gonna try and keep it short and simple because I desperately need your help. Okay. A year ago, I cheated on my boyfriend. I got blackout drunk with my best friend. We went back to her apartment and I hooked up with her soon-to-be brother-in-law. Mm-hmm. It was a makeout and a five-second blowjob before I ran away crying and went to bed. After which, I told no one, not even my best friend. But her fiance definitely saw and was aware of what happened. A few months later, I came clean to my boyfriend and then to my best friend. Mm. My boyfriend and I decided to stay together and I moved to Texas to be with him. We started couples therapy and we are now engaged. My fiance wants nothing to do with my best friend and her fiance. It reminds him of something traumatic, to say the least. And he doesn't want the fiance at our wedding. He says that he knew what was happening and clearly disrespected him and he wants nothing to do with him. Now my best friend says that my fiance is manipulative and controlling and refuses to even be my friend until my fiance can get over it. Help, a bride in distress. Oh, that's rough. I you know what it reminds me of. Vanderpump Rules. No, um, the moronic storyline in Sex in the City where um, Carrie cheats on Aiden with Big and obviously they break up and then her and Aiden get back together and she like m- m- maintains her friendship with Big. Big comes to Aiden's country house. He calls her all the time. Wants, she's like, I want you guys to be friends. You literally cheated on him with okay, this guy. That's insane, but that's not the same thing because he- she's not asking her fiance to be okay with the guy that she, the bro, the guy she cheated with, they never see I guess it's that's the brother-in-law. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, the fiance is mad at the other friend's fiance for like knowing Bro what code. happened and not telling mm. him. But I don't think that's fair. Um, maybe that's something that you guys need to talk about in like couples counseling. Yes. I mean, it's definitely probably embarrassing like to see them around and have them at your wedding knowing that they know what happened. But if he's able to forgive you, it's not fair for him to like place his anger on this person that he knows like three degrees removed. Mm. And I don't think he's being controlling or manipulative. I just think it's like probably where he has placed all of his anger about the situation. And that's, you need to work on like, working through that anger instead of just like letting him blame them honestly like I don't know if I agree like he's forgive he really only has to forgive her and he has and I don't think it's so crazy that he doesn't like want to be reminded they moved like he doesn't want to be reminded yeah but this is her friend. it's embarrassing for it's him. not fair for her to have to like lose a friend I don't know I like she can't invite the girl to her wedding and not invite her fiance for sure the fiance didn't do anything wrong Ugh, but you know, I also need to know more about your mans because now your best friend is saying that your fiance is manipulative and controlling. Is he? Or is that just her responding to, to, this, to this issue? Or is she actually trying to help, you know? Would she have said it if this wasn't a thing? Right. Okay, so I change, I actually take it back. I actually don't think I have like good advice here. Because honestly, like I, I'm like a little bit sympathetic to the person who got cheated on. That's just of me. Course, like, of course. So my, even but if sometimes I- sometimes it's like, if you choose to forgive and to move on, then you really have to forgive and move on. Well, that's what happens. I think a lot of times with couples who get back together after like infidelity is they forgive, but they don't forget. And they really like don't forgive and they don't fully trust. So it's just more of like a slower breakdown of the relationship as opposed to like a full breakup. But it sounds like you guys are still in couple therapy. So I would unpack this there. In therapy, yeah. Because this is... It's a quandary. It's a quandary. But I do think like in order to th- for them to move on from it, like they really have to move on. And that includes the couple. Yeah. And being able to like, be reminded of it and being okay with it. it's not it. like it was the fiance. It was the fiance's brother. Right. Oh my yeah. God, if it was the... 
actual person. No, we wouldn't Goodbye. be talking. But that's what I was saying with Aiden. Goodbye. And that's Aiden and Mig. She, Carrie is so fucking wrong. I just recently watched that episode where like, you know, Big is having lady troubles and he like confides in Carrie and she's away in the country and he was like, can I please come? And she's like, goes over to Aiden and it was like, he's coming. And Aiden was like, what? Like literally it's what fucking crazy. Like if you need any more reason to understand like why Carrie is the woat, watch like the three episodes where she's back together with Aiden and they like zoom in on her friendship with Big, the man who she literally had like a weeks long affair with the first time she dated Aiden. It's so asinine. Also the country houses and episodes in general are just Good. really unfavorable towards Carrie. Yes. She's such so mean, a brat. A brat. Yeah. Like Justice. literally he built that cabin with his bare hands, put in his own hot water heater. And she's complaining that she has to go like, okay, stay in your little apartment in the hot summer we- weekend. Justice for Saffern. Justice for Aiden completely. Like yeah. w- literally if you could have ended up like, you know, if you were Carrie and you were normal and not a moron and you had your choice between Aiden and big, who would you, who would you have chosen? Because I think Aiden is like more handsome and the he, thing is, I I I am I I'm equally into both of them, and I'm not obsessed with either one of them. No, but if you, I want you to choose. Well, let's break it down. Probably Aiden. Probably Aiden, because big like that whole like chasing him around for twenty years, like that could never be me. Yeah, I agree. Like, oh, you love me, and you want me, and you're wonderful, mm-hmm. and you're supportive, and you like successful m- build things. You no, really, the only thing big had going for him was his money, because honestly, he wasn't that handsome. And he was a dick. So he's handsome, but it's not like he had this amazing personality. No, know? Aiden was like hot as hell. And like, he's just like with all the models and like, uh, yeah, like well, yeah, like going to movie premieres. Yuck. Yeah, no, you're right. Aiden is like totally like husband, dad material. Yeah. But, and he was like really financially stable. Like his business was taking off. Like in the movie, he's out yeah, in Dubai. No, it's not like he's not successful. No, but Big was like big time banker. Big wig. But they're both businessmen, Bo. Yeah. No, I would go Aiden. And like Aiden had a dog. So obviously you could bring Bryce. (laughs) And a country house. Big, big. Right. No. And like, you know, it's, it's a fixer upper. Like get, get your hands dirty, Carrie. Like put in your own bathtub. Like what do you want? Where's your sweat equity? Right. Right. So that was your toasters at gmail.com. If you want to write in to see us, um, that's our show. Um, we're about to find out if today's episode has any technical issues, but I'm looking at the camera. I'm looking at the podcast equipment. I feel like we might be in the clear, so I don't want to jinx it, but um, thank you guys so much for your patience this week. We really appreciate it, but we're, we're getting to a good space. Yeah, tomorrow actually might be like even- Visually different. Visually different. We're, we're going to move some things around. We're considering some things. Yeah. Please uh, just don't come for the couch. Like, Don't be like, yeah, get rid of it. Just- no, don't, don't come for the couch and be like, yikes. You know? Don't be that girl. That's the title of today's episode. Oh, person. Um, thank you so much for listening to the Morning Toast, the Millennium Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know. Before you wake up and take a bite at it. No, wait, I keep fucking it up. Thank you so much for listening to the Morning Toast, the Millennium Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeart Radio, Castbox, all the places where we listen to podcasts, find us the Morning Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. Have an incredible hump day. Don't forget to hump someone you love consensually, and we will see you tomorrow. Make it in Crayob, you guys. Make Make it it in Crayob. In Crayob hump day. Bye. Bye. Bye.